let's not delay any further. And first up, we will have a keynote about the current state of the Angular, which is very relevant now because there was a release of Angular 13, which brings a lot of groundbreaking things like, which we'll learn quickly shortly about. So the keynote is by Maxim Salniko and Maxim is a very well-known person in the Angular community as the organizer of any Vikings conference, Angular Oslo meetup, and other NG community gatherings. Besides that, he is basically speaking extensively about the cloud and front-end topics in the conferences around the world. So please, everyone, let's welcome Maxim. Hey, Maxim, welcome. Hey, hi, Thomas. Hello, 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 dear Angular developers, dear attendees of uh, Angular Day. How is it going? Where are you connecting to us from today? I stream directly from uh, capital of Norway, city of Oslo. Right, welcome. So I see here that uh, you have a couple of like interesting things about yourself. So like you supposedly broke the speed of 87 kilometers per hour while downhill skiing. Is this like even like humanly possible? This sounds a bit dangerous to be honest. It's like faster than like I usually drive the car. Like what's that? I, I was a bit surprised to see this number myself, but uh, yeah, everything is possible. But yeah, folks, safety first. I was well equipped with all this, you know, proper um, equipment like helmet and all, all uh, other stuff. Wow, like it sounds like lots of fun. But anyway, let's not delay our folks from learning about Angular any further. So please, let's just hop into the talk and learn more about the status of the Angular. Yeah, let's make it. Status of uh, Angular. Uh, my session will contain actually two large parts. First, um, we'll check what's going on in uh, the relationship between Angular and the uh, Angular community, uh, because this is very important part of uh, Angular as, uh, as ecosystem. And it's uh, impossible to reason about status of Angular without mentioning all these connections. And of course, a uh, new release was uh, introduced just a few days ago. So we'll uh, dedicate enough time to go through main updates, uh, what to expect from the new version. My name is Maxim Salnikov. I work as a developer engagement lead at uh, Microsoft. So I make sure that all developers have, have uh, proper uh, tools and uh, resources to uh, succeed with cloud technologies. And I'm big, big, big fan of the developer communities. As uh, Thomas introduced, I uh, run uh, Angular meetup and bunch of uh, bunch of other meetups here in Oslo, where I live. And uh, yeah, I, I'm proud to be a very active part of Angular community. Um, and I, I, I'm happy to co contribute uh, my spare time on uh, organizing meetups, conferences, and Vikings. Maybe uh, you had a chance to attend one of this, um, uh, one of the editions of NG Vikings, and uh, a, a sneak peek. We work on the next one. Um, and I'm a Google developer expert in Angular. Let's stay connected. Let's stay connected on uh, Twitter. Maybe this is uh, the simplest way to um, interact. Webmax, are you? Please uh, follow me. And this will be very useful to uh, stay connected on Twitter because right after the session, I will post the link to the slide deck, uh, which I stream currently straight from, uh, from, from the web. So it's web-based slides. And this uh, slide deck contains lots of links, lots of references. I'm a big fan of, uh, let's say, uh, data-driven presentation. So every statement I have in the presentation has some uh, proof uh, in form of uh, this blog or this part of the documentation. And of course, uh, these links contain way, way more details, so you can always dive deeper. So then please follow me. Uh, I personally work with Angular for eight or nine years. I don't remember exactly, but I uh, found that I uh, started building Angular, Angular JS by those years apps since its version 1.1. One, one, just a fun fact. 
Okay, first, angular in numbers. I'm not a big fan of um, all these uh, comparisons, uh, co comparisons of, um, of the frameworks, but um, still it can give us some available information and maybe some call to actions. Um, we start from the survey conducted by state of JS. It's the data for, for 2020. I hope that uh, the next uh, edition, edition for 2021 is coming soon. And it's based on a um, survey uh, of um, 20 plus thousand people um, asked from uh, uh, 137 countries. So what does it say? And uh, Angular is the second line if uh, you do not, do not uh, uh, see the text uh, properly on, on that slide. Um, yeah, Angular is uh, still very popular and uh, yeah, it's uh, second uh, by uh, popularity. Uh, but what we see on the next uh, chapter of the same survey is um, interest is uh, going down. And what is uh, exactly interest in that sense? It's a, a percentage of um, people who do not work with a particular technology yet, but interested in learning this technology. And Angular is not uh, something unique in that sense. Uh, so as we see all major frameworks uh, experience uh, some uh, decrease of interest. And maybe this is uh, connected with the fact that uh, we are lucky to have a uh, new framework for web front-end development almost every every single day, or at least uh, every every single week, right? So people tend to learn something new and instead of um, go, going deeper into what um, exists. Also, it's fun fact um, um, that uh, there is kind of a um, plateau in uh, number of questions asked uh, monthly for uh, um, Angular and uh, Vue.js. And if, if, you, if you see at the very end of um, the, this uh, line for uh, React, it's uh, kind of decreased. So I, I don't know uh, how, uh, wh why it's um, so in absolute numbers you'll find uh, around a quarter of a million questions asked about uh, Angular monthly on Stack Overflow. And uh, also Angular is uh, officially documented the most, uh, the most dramatical rise of um, interest in form of questions of Stack Overflow. Um, um it's connected with the uh, release of um, angular 2 of course uh, we developers started to ask many many more questions about this new completely new version of the framework only uh, only one technology had the comparable cliff is um, it's uh, swift another survey uh, by Stack Overflow, same Stack Overflow shows that um, Angular still has a strong position in the most wanted framework. It's somehow similar to the um, interest um, research from uh, state of JS. So yeah, so still many people uh, who do not work with Angular want to start using this. And um, another confirmation that uh, Angular holds very strong position among professional developers. So here it's on the third position. But yeah, these are just uh, just numbers. Let's uh, talk about relations. Let's talk about relations with um, or between Angular and community. And um, why is that important? Well, for for us, for uh, developers, it's super important uh, to to know that this um, relation is somehow sustainable. I mean. Uh, that uh, tomorrow folks who build Angular, like core team, will not say, no, we, we give up. Uh, we are not interested in uh, building this uh, framework uh, anymore. So let's make sure that this will not happen. Um, to, to do this, let's understand what do we give to each other, Angular to community and community to Angular. We start from, from the first. Well, what Angular uh, or Angular core team, to be more precise, uh, gives to developer community, to the global dev community? Yeah, of course, uh, framework itself, right? Uh, it's uh, free with uh, very open license. Uh, you can build both uh, like commercial and uh, non-commercial projects. Um, and uh, the popularity of uh, 
Angular as a package on NPM is uh, is growing. So these are numbers uh, for today, well over two millions. And uh, like one and a half year ago, it was uh, 1.4. And by the way, these are just weekly downloads of the core libraries for, of Angular from NPM. Uh, and it's not a surprise that on GitHub, we have over 2 million projects based on Angular framework. Uh, and of course, folks, this is only uh, maybe top of the iceberg because uh, we all know that Angular is a serious player in the uh, enterprise world with their own um, registries of the package and their own uh, closed source uh, repositories. So in reality, numbers are way higher. And um, what's uh, about um, like uh, vice versa? What do we as dev community give to Angular team to make sure that uh, we it's a win-win situation? Um, first, it's uh, all kind of feedback, um, not only like direct one in form of, uh, for example, comments on uh, GitHub repo. It's also um, in form of issues. It also in form of all your blog posts, all your videos you create uh, on, um, on um, how to get started or how to um, uh, dive deeper into this or that part of Angular and even tweets. Uh, it's, it's super important to have this uh, feedback loop always on. Um, next big part is uh, core development. And in a few slides, you will see that um, um, developer community contributes to quite a crucial, quite uh, like critical parts of of the framework. So it's not just, you know, fixing typos on uh, the on the documentation. And fixing typos is also super important, by the way. And the uh, ecosystem, what do I mean by this pillar is um, all the libraries, all the um, uh, package we create um, using Angular framework, like for Angular developers, like uh, um, UI libraries, um, state management libraries, all kind of um, projects for Angular developers created by community itself. And uh, yeah, of course, Angular team is also using this uh, community contribu contributed libraries for, for their work. And I hope that we have really sustainable um, relationship uh, collaboration a bit more details on how you can start your contributions to to angular to have even more people involved in uh, in these um, uh, relationships um, maybe the simplest one is uh, reviewing the documentation before before uh, contributions like this please read uh, content contributors guide. Angular team dedicated enough time to um, uh, compile a very detailed guide for you, like uh, step by step, all the best practices. So your contribution will not, uh, will not be ignored uh, as, uh, as some noise. And uh, all pages on uh, Angular documentation on angular.io have this icon like pencil and uh, that means that you can open this uh, page in um, code editor it's uh, hosted uh, as in source code repository and do some changes and uh, for example what change that could be to, to get started the simplest ever change is uh, to make sure that the documentation is up to date so angular teams tries to have um, all pages of uh, documentation website reviewed at least every half of the year or with the next major release like it happened a uh, few days ago so uh what how that works you just read the documentation if you see that it's okay no obsolete data no errors uh, all good you just open this for editing and uh, uh, update the date of review and it's your review and um, what's next you can always submit a feature request and um, Angular actually was blamed a few years ago like Angular team to be precise uh, for um, somehow ignoring all these thousands of feature requests by community 
these days are gone. Uh, Angular team did uh, really nice work, like lessons uh, learned on uh, triaging all these thousands of uh, feature requests. And uh, for uh, during um, maybe around one year, number of uh, open issues uh, marked as feature went to thousands to hundreds. I think this is a tremendous job by, by Angular team. And uh, it's another confirmation that your contribution will not be ignored if uh, if yeah, like you um, submitted it in the correct way and the contributor guide is to, here to help you. Um, also, before um, previous release, Angular team introduced a new like work, workflow on how to deal with these thousands of um, issues created by dev communities uh, on their main source code repo. Uh, actually, they adopted the same flow that we have uh, in Microsoft for uh, VS Code team. Um, so how does this work? I will uh, briefly um, explain. Uh, you submit some issue on um, Angular source code Repo. Um, okay, someone from Angular Core team is doing initial review just to mark is this a feature request or not. If this is a feature request, uh, and uh, if this feature request aligned with the uh, current roadmap of Angular, well, it's marked as prioritized, and uh, yeah, this will land in uh, one of the next versions of the framework. If it's something completely new, um, Angular team opens. Uh, kind of voting and uh, it keeps it open for uh, a few months and uh, then tries to estimate is this something important for dev community or not if it gathered enough um, votes in form of just uh, thumbs up um, it goes further if if not uh, you see that uh, this uh, issue will be just closed but what if this uh, feature is popular enough then there is uh, another round of uh, evaluation. It uh, might take uh, some time. And um, again, if this feature somehow aligned with uh, the future roadmap, it just uh, goes to, uh, let's say, implementation flow. I think this is very clear and very fair and uh, very transparent. Um, so it was about submitting a feature request and you can you know always go and implement it and um, this new release which was uh, introduced uh, literally maybe like uh, seven days ago or even fewer contains lots of uh, very important pieces created built uh, implemented by folks not from a core team but from uh, from developer community we'll go um, a bit more detailed through few of them and now we came to the point to learn what's new in the latest released which is version 13. Uh, i know that in uh, quite a few uh, cultures number 13 considered to be not very lucky one, uh, but we'll see how that works for, for Angular in that sense. I hope that uh, this will not follow you know, this, uh, uh, this idea. So like in every major version update, it contains multiple, let's say, categories of what's new. And let's start with uh, removals, because this is something that uh, might affect your application, maybe in the most major way. So after all, your application can just break if you still use something that was removed in the new version. So uh, before uh, I introduce what was removed, let me, let's um reflects about bit, a bit on why do we want to remove some pieces of um, this or that um, software or like or, or framework well i think it's uh, it's quite clear um some obsolete parts they in support of this um, let's say outdated parts definitely do not make developer experience simpler right so uh, removing of um, something that's not needed anymore definitely improves our 
developer experience. And uh, if we talk about web, of course, it's crucial to keep up with um, web standards. And it's just impossible to always um, have support for all old versions of, uh, of the browsers, if we talk about web. So what was removed? Support of uh, Internet Explorer 11. Of course, it didn't happen, you know, as a as a surprise. This was uh, very well announced in uh, in advance, and uh, in version 12, this support was deprecated. So I hope that the majority of us had enough time to uh, to prepare for for this quite a crucial removal. Um, what does it bring to the table of um, web developers and web users also, by the way? Uh, we can uh, use all the latest and greatest standards of, um, of web as platform, like CSS variables, like uh, web animations. I believe this is, uh, this is something that really opens lots of new doors for uh, Angular as a framework. Um, and another crucial part, um, like crucial for previous versions, um, that is removed is uh, view engine this uh, uh, renderer engine for uh, old older versions of um, angular i believe uh, it was with us uh, since since angular 2 and uh, if i remember correctly around version 8 or or 9 ivy was introduced and the uh, angular team um, checked all the, all the telemetry about uh, how many developers are using IV and how many are still relying on view engine. So the time is proper to remove this support. Um, of course, yeah, what, what happens if you remove support of uh, quite, a, quite a serious part of, of, of the framework? The framework becomes lighter, faster, better for us for, as developers, and of course, better for uh, our dear users. Lots of uh, other developer experience improvements you can expect in version 13. Um, just a list few of them. Better APIs. Better is not very like strong word, right? It's it's too generic. So uh, in a few next slides, we'll go a bit more in detail what uh, why it became better, right? What what exactly became better? Documentation very important part of any framework, any software project, I'd say. And now we have uh, uh, very well documented uh, sessions, uh, sections about internationalization and localization. This uh, tag handler that uh, introduces quite a new way to localize our projects. Core libraries that Angular relies on were updated, um, like, that brings uh, lots of new possibilities for, for us developers. So always good to um, work with the latest and greatest versions. And many more automations in Angular language service that um, directly improves performance. Uh, and here I talk about performance of, uh, of us as uh, developers during coding time. Um, so what, uh, which exactly improvements are there from this category? First, uh, please make sure that you upgraded your version of um, Angular language service if you use this as an extension, for example, on VS Code. And then you can uh, expect, among um, other improvements, um, uh, support of uh, auto optional chaining on uh, nullable symbols. Isn't that cool? So now, yeah, we have, uh, let's say, next level of um, automation of um, building, let's say, uh, more robust templates for, um, for our code. And by the way, this is community-driven contribution. Yes, so for, for some points, I will add this uh, icon that this is uh, not from Angular team, this, uh, this up, uh, update, upgrade, but from, um, from our dev community. During runtime, of course, uh, with uh, removal of uh, view engine, as I mentioned, uh, framework is getting lighter and the uh, projects are getting lighter. And I will illustrate this uh, on very uh, practical slide. And also, you know, 
small detail and i i love uh, attention of angular team to the details now we can also um, inline adobe fonts in our application in previous version we could do it with um, google fonts now the same goes for um, adobe that also improves uh, the first contentful paint of the um, application which is quite crucial metric of uh, performance and the uh, build time Yes, of course, um, we have quite serious improvement here, and uh, we'll chat about that on the next slide. Before we dive deeper on this uh, imp uh, performance improvements, let's uh, remind ourselves how do we upgrade to the newer version of um, Angular. And uh, we are also covered here by uh, Angular team. They created this nice uh, first website, uh, update.angular.io, where you can go and uh, check which commands do you have to run. And after all, we have this uh, ng update command, part of Angular CLI that will do all the, let's say, dirty job for, for us. And we have just to you know, uh, be delighted by the results. So the comment is, is simple. And uh, if you use Angular material, you have to <coughs> run this second command. And you, you uh, as I mentioned, you can uh, get exact uh, comments on uh, this um, update angular.io website. To illustrate what happened with my personal project, one of my uh, like pet projects, this is my blog uh, created with um, Angular. Um, this is stats for version 12, and this is what happened after I upgraded to version 13. <coughs> so you see that uh, without any movements, any actions from, from my side, except uh, this upgrade, my project suddenly became smaller, lighter. Uh, so this will load faster and this will bring more joy to my users. Isn't that cool? Uh, but net, it's not the end of the story. I uh, thought that uh, there are some per um, improvements on performance during build time. If we take this uh, screenshot from a previous slide, so this is uh, something from version 13, and um, let's do some, some small change, like uh, so it will not even affect uh, bundle size, but if we run build for the second time, it will affect build time. That's awesome. Uh, so it also definitely improves um, developer experience, so less time for um, waiting. And um, the numbers I received are quite well aligned with uh, what introduced on uh, official Angular documents. So yeah, it's uh, almost 70% faster on the second build. Why is that happened? Because now we have persistent build cache. So this is just uh, in um, .angular slash cache folder. Some artifacts created by build tools can be persisted. Uh, and there is no reason to rebuild them every single time. Um, you have to add this uh, few lines to Angular JSON if you upgrade from a previous version of uh, CLI to uh, version 13. If you start a new project, you just don't do, you, you don't have to um, do any edits in Angular JSON. It works by default. And uh, I received a few questions about this persistent build cache. First. Is this um, the part of, uh, let's say, incremental build flow we all expect? No, it's uh, it's not about incremental build. And the second question, uh, is uh, there reason to uh, check in what's uh, in this cache folder um, if, if it's like so persistent, right? Um, no. Uh, please do not uh, put the contents of this cache folder into your source code repo because uh, even if we call this persistent, it's still cache. So there is no reason to uh, check this in. Um, next improvements. If we talk about, uh, let's say, uh, mainstream web front-end application, most likely 99% of them contain uh, this or that form of the forms. And uh, having improvements in that area is super important. And we have something cool in uh, Angular 13. 
Um, now we can enable disable validators dynamically, including mix, um, mean length and uh, max length, but that was uh, regression in the previous version. And it's also, by the way, contribution by community. And now we have a special type called form control status, which uh, makes uh, a result, um, well, like not, not result, but status of the control type stricter. And uh, maybe this is not uh, like huge, or, like big deal for uh, for the framework, but it's definitely first step towards this big deal for uh, framework and all of us web uh, front end developers about typed forms. This is uh, so much anticipated, so much expected part of um, of the framework and uh, my hope that uh, with um, first this first step of uh, stricter typed form control status, we sooner or later go there. If we talk about forms and form controls, it's super important to keep them accessible. Now it's uh, not nice to have. It's absolutely must have for all um, web front -on projects to be accessible. And um, I'm super happy um, with uh, the work Angular team and Angular material team, to be precise, did in that direction. Again, without any extra actions from us, from the developer side, we will just get better um, accessibility of, um, of our applications uh, and uh, UI elements in, uh, in particular. For, for example, we have now better uh, contrast mode, uh, we have um, optimized uh, sizes for uh, for touch uh, on uh, multiple controls. Lots of improvements related to <clears throat> focusing on uh, controls, including proper autofocus when needed, and uh, even more um, updates, additions, um, fixes to area. Um, and uh, what I love the most, Angular actually did double job. They introduced similar change, similar updates in accessibility, both for classic version of Angular components and MDC, um, material design um, uh, controls based versions. So maybe you know that uh, MDC is now in kind of experimental mode, but sooner or later, this will be uh, main version of um, Angular components so it's important to keep um, this uh, on the same level and more improvements uh, if we talk about this better apis angular service worker now has more ergonomic one now we can get update status uh, directly from uh, promise no need to um, um, watch for um, corresponding observable which became deprecated by the way and it's also a contribution by the community Simpler way to create dynamic components. Lots of updates in the uh, router, both uh, adding new functionality and uh, fixing some uh, some small bugs. Also, lots of uh, contributions by uh, by community. More isolated, uh, faster tests with uh, automatic cleanup of um, test bed. And um, thanks to removal of uh, view engine, now APF, Angular package for format, is uh, modernized and streamlined. Oof. But we want to hear what's next. Uh, what's next on the Angular roadmap? First, all, let's say, major steps of what's coming in the version 14, 15, uh, whatever, of course, without uh, mentioning of particular version, are documented. I also love this openness and transparency from, um, from Angular team. And this is my personal top three most uh, anticipated updates. Uh, first, standalone components. There is, uh, there was, open uh, RFC request for comments. They plan to close it uh, November 8, but I actually I didn't uh, check if that's uh, open or or not, um, if, like was disclosed or not. Um, anyway, that's a really good idea for you folks to go and check. Uh, there are lots of comments and uh, there is um, quite detailed, let's say, design document on how that might happen in one of the next version of uh, Angular. And this will be like, let's say, let's uh, let's be honest, true game changer in lots of uh, ways, how we structure, how we architect, how we build our Angular applications. 
Uh, then I already mentioned that uh, quite soon this switch will happen from, uh, let's say, custom material components to the ones um, supported, uh, implemented uh, using MDC web. Also a very important change to keep up Angular with uh, web standards and strongly type forms. I think that this form control status is uh, first very, very well contribution towards this direction. Uh, by the way, on this slide, these texts uh, over, uh, under the icons are links to corresponding either uh, discussions or design documents. So that's uh, super important for you to um, click these links to check what's going on. Let's sum up. Angular, like we checked in the first part of my presentation, is here to stay. The, con the, the relationship between the Angular team, between Google and the community is sustainable. And um, yeah, definitely Angular loves community. And uh, please give some love to Angular in form of your contributions. Version 13, uh, despite its uh, its number, is awesome. And uh, I uh, gave you very practical um, knowledge how to update and why to update. So update it today and think about where to host your uh, modern, beautiful Angular application. Here I uh, offer you to give a try to relatively new service we have on Azure called Azure Static Web Apps. And if you scan this QR code or just type this link, you will get to the documentation page how to deploy your Angular application to the cloud for free. On that, thank you very much. Let's stay connected on Twitter. And I'm open for your questions. Hey, Maxim. So that was a really, really information rich talk. Thank you for that. So, folks, as Maxim said, do not hesitate. Ask him questions in the QA section on the stage, basically in the hop in. So, whenever if you have any kind of question, you would like to more details about something which Maxim told us or even something else related to Angular 13 and the news, then please do not hesitate and ask the questions and we will relay them further. But yeah, I have to say this was really amazing. And what I really loved the most was how you highlighted the a lot of community contributions to the Angular itself, because this is something like, yeah, we see, then maybe read the change log. Okay, this is new, this is new, this is better. But uh, it's very cool to see that actually like a lot of this new cool stuff coming is from the people like us who are just really interested and involved with the ecosystem. So that was really, really cool. Thank you for that. My pleasure. Yeah, my, my, my goal was to, to motivate people to start start their contributions. Definitely. And that was also like maybe like one thing which you shown in the beginning where you basically showed these charts about like the questions and the stack overflow and the popularity like that. And this brought me to think like, okay, maybe like the questions plateaued, but maybe that's also a good thing because as the framework got like much more stable over time, right? So then people actually like now know their way around it. So... I think that's not necessarily like a bad thing because it also signifies like how stable the things have become. Would that be totally, correct totally. in your yeah. eyes? And, uh, here, here we can uh, get excited by uh, by the number, by by absolute number. So quarter of million of questions uh, monthly, isn't that cool? Yeah, that's true. that's definitely true. And I have to also say that like in terms of basically like this this cleanup of the issue number. Or not like not this like a cleanup, but like like processing of all these issues on the on the GitHub, right? Like on the Angular repository, that uh, as you said, like that if you try to contribute, that people do gonna have a look at that. It will be processed like with a standardized process pipeline, and if people really like it, then it has a very pretty high chances in ending up in like the Angular itself. So it's, I think this is also pretty cool. And I, if I remember correctly, this. Was called like the operation dialogue and it was very successful so that's very very nice definitely so folks please any kind of questions don't hesitate or maybe you can just like shoot us uh, into the chat what are your top three like uh, upcoming stuff on the roadmap because that's also something which you told us about that now there is actually like an official transparent roadmap of what is coming to angular which is also something which is not so common, let's say, in every other solution out there. So 
maybe you can also give us like some hints about what you folks are looking forward to. But yeah, as you said, like this typed forms, that would be like a big one, actually. Absolutely. Because this is something yeah, that uh, folks, then I have questions uh, for, for you. Please uh, post in the chat uh, two things. First, um, did you try to upgrade to version 13? And second, um, what feature of version 13 excites you the most? Because we are, we all like a very diverse group of developers and uh, maybe some um, of the features I introduced, uh, you just don't care about this, but you are super excited about uh, this particular one. So it's super interesting for me to know um, what was really like uh, expected by uh, by the community. So yeah, and yeah, I, I, will, I will check the chat for, uh, for next few minutes and maybe we have a conversation there. Definitely makes sense because like if you think about it, right? So some people just develop their application, like it's like some smaller company or like some hobby project or whatever that is. Some people are more interested, like the, the CEO. Some people are working in the large organization where they need to like deploy some like libraries, which are then used by their colleagues across multiple teams. So for them, maybe like this Angular package format will make much more difference. For some people, it might be that these material components are now becoming more accessible out of the box. So it kind of can like deliver this kind of experience without the need to do this themselves, which is very, very helpful. And looks like we have a question. So uh, Massimo is asking, what's the roadmap for better zoneless Angular support? Oh, that's a that's a very good question, and uh, it's uh, it's 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 fun that when I delivered similar session for uh, version twelve, on this most uh, weighted uh, features of um, Angular thirteen, I, I I had this um, opt out for uh, for zone JS uh, as uh, one of three features I personally expect the most. Uh, but then I, I decided that uh, you know, no, um, standalone components is uh, is uh, like bigger. <laughs> in, in, like let, let's raise uh, ambitions um, about uh, your applications without the zones. Uh, from what I know, that now you can um, have configuration file where you can disable um, zone JS for particular events. For example, if you uh, if your application can survive without uh, uh, doing these uh, checks on uh, on every like click, you can just uh, by one line in the configuration go and disable this. But um, yeah, I think it's very nice um, step towards um, zone JS less um, framework. But uh, yeah, let's um, let's see. I haven't heard any big news related to complete removal uh, removal of uh, of that let's just wait for what angular team uh, thinks on that and please uh, provide your comments i believe uh, there are lots of uh, corresponding issues opened when you where you can uh, discuss and maybe give your idea your opinion on that uh, thank you very much for the answer. So I hope Masim was happy with the answer. Then there was also Victor who was asking basically the same thing. When the zone changes will be removed from Angular finally. So I hope you got your answer too. Basically, it is already possible, as you said, to disable it for some of the events. It is also possible to provide noob zone. So like you can actually make your Angular application zoneless even today. But then, of course, like the whole responsibility to trigger change detection when something changes falls back on your shoulder. So this is like the trade off which you may or may not willing to be make. But yeah, with that being said, I think we don't have much more questions and we have to progress with other content. So thank you again very much, Maxim. It was amazing to hear all this new cool stuff about the Angular and hopefully see you at the next edition at the Angular Day. Oh, I, 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 I'm so excited to to come to this uh, conference in, in, in person. Really can't wait uh, when it becomes possible. And thanks for having me and uh, good luck with uh, the rest of the conference. There are tons of super cool talks on, on the agenda. Thank you, Maxim. See you next time. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>